white sand beaches, and friendly smiles, travel with us to Barbados. Welcome to Vacation Mavens, a family travel podcast with ideas for your next vacation and tips to get you out the door. Here are your hosts, Kim from Stuffed Suitcase and Tamara from We Three Travel. Today's presenting sponsor is Rosetta Stone. Are you planning an international trip next year? Now is the time to start learning a new language with Rosetta Stone. The Rosetta Stone language learning system prepares you to use your new language skills in the real world. Rosetta Stone uses visual cues in its dynamic immersion system to develop practical conversational skills. With an emphasis on speaking, you will feel confident using your new language skills when traveling abroad. This holiday season, why not gift your family or yourself a 3, 6, 12, or even 24-month subscription for as little as under $11 per month? You can learn on the go with the Rosetta Stone mobile app with features like downloadable lessons for learning offline and an audio companion for environments where you can listen but not speak aloud. Visit rosettastone.com to sign up today. Hi, Vacation Mavens listeners. Today is a little different than normal because Tamara is sick. So instead of our normal chit chat that we have before our interview, we're going to jump right into talking to Tara all about Barbados. Today we're chatting with Tara Cannon, and she's the owner of Pint Size Pilot, a family travel adventure blog dedicated to taking the fear out of exploring the world with kids. Hi, Tara. It's good to have you here today. Hi, Kimberly. Thank you for having me on. And I should mention to our listeners that you guys are going to be sad that you're missing Tamara. So everyone, please right now send her your good well wishes because she is under the weather. She was sick all Thanksgiving and she had some ear troubles on her flight home. So she is not doing well. So... Send oh, her dear. Your, get well, get well vibes. Yes, definitely. But today we are talking all about Barbados, which is an island I just went to and an island I believe that you've been to a few times. But before we get talking about Barbados, why don't you start out and tell our listeners a little bit about yourself? Uh, yes, thank you, Kimberly. So as you mentioned, I run the family travel website, Pint Size Pilot. I've been doing that for about eight years now. So my kids are, have to say, aren't really so pint size anymore. Uh, we live in Vancouver, Canada, um, and the kids are now 14 and 11 years old. So we are, um, we're on the go as much as school will allow these days. And I often joke to my husband that uh, I would sooner spend money on a plane ticket than on our house. So our house might just fall down around us. <laughs> That's funny. I know that. I know that feeling well. And I also know the feeling of the kids in school because you're so yours are the same age as mine almost, although Mia just turned 12. But I have 14 and 12. And my 14 year old, uh, we just got her to agree I'm headed out on a cruise with her and She's missing three days of school, but she got permission from all of her teachers and she's really excited. But it does get harder. Oh my harder. gosh. Yeah. It does get harder. And it's what what I find interesting is that as much as I feel like my kids can catch up academically, they're a little more stressed about missing school with all the group projects and yep. that sort of thing because they feel like they're letting other kids down and that sort of thing. So it is we definitely when that when that school schedule comes out every year, I study it and try to work around it. <laughs> nice. That's awesome. <laughs> so we are going to be chatting about Barbados and you've been a couple times, but do you want to tell us when, like how often you've been and when the last time was that you went? Yes, uh, certainly. The We are big fans of Barbados. And I have to say that we, as a traveling family, we rarely visit the same place twice, but we've actually been to Barbados three times. Uh, my husband recommended it initially because he had been before we met, but uh, we went first when... I had a toddler and an infant, so that was our first trip. So I think Ella was probably six months old and Lucas was three. We went again when they were seven and 10. And then more recently, we went um, at 10 and 13, actually with my parents this time. So we did something which we hadn't done a lot of before, a multi-generational trip to Barbados. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, you must really like it also because I know when I flew, I mean, it's it's a bit of a haul from the West Coast. So from Vancouver, you've got an extra hour on there on me even. So um, we sure yeah. do. Yeah, it's um, we fell in love with the Caribbean before we had kids and certainly coming from the, from the West Coast from Vancouver. It is I mean, some of the islands we've gone to in the Caribbean are 24 hour hauls for us, meaning we usually have to do a layover at an overnight at Dallas, Fort Worth or in Toronto. So it's a long haul, but we find 
find that once we get there, it's just such a wonderful experience. It's worth it. Definitely. Yeah. And for people who don't realize Barbados is actually, it's in the, what do they call it? South Antilles? Is that right? I, um, I believe so. I think but it's so. just I off the so. coast of uh, South America. <laughs> I'm trying to think right. of like whatever country right, that it's is. Like further south. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's not your, it's not as close to Florida as some of the Caribbean islands. So you're definitely adding on a little bit of distance there, but I, I definitely fell in love with it. So it sounds like you've been a few different times. Do you have a recommendation for when you think the best time of the year is to visit Barbados? Well, I do. Um, typically, high season for Barbados runs, you know, mid December into the end of April, and that is when you get the nicest weather in Barbados, and it's also dry season, so you don't get very much in the way of tropical rain. Now, I am quite a frugal traveler, so in a perfect world, the time I like to visit the Caribbean and Barbados is around the first week of December, because then you're getting the great weather. You're outside of hurricane season generally, which runs, I believe it's June through the end of November. Um, but you're getting great weather, but the prices, you know, for your accommodation and that sort of thing are about half the price they would be just a couple weeks later. So that in a perfect world, I would take the first week of December and go then. Nice. Yeah, something to mention also is when I was researching, because I was headed down there in September, I think that's right. Is that right? Is that when I went? <laughs> September. And, yeah. you know, everybody was saying, because it's the heart of, you know, hurricane season, but everybody kept saying, oh, don't worry about Barbados, because it's not in the hurricane, like, bat path or belt. belt. Really, right? yeah, thank yeah. you. I was like, whatever that term is. But right. uh, there was a tropical storm that hit the island. I got out the morning it hit. Uh, so some people oh stayed and went, you know, went through it. So, you know, there, it just because you read everywhere that says Barbados is not in, you know, the hurricane belt, there, there are chances for, for some tropical storms and hurricanes. So right. just be aware exactly. of that. Yeah, it's rare in that area, but yeah. you're right, it absolutely can happen. And certainly when you're looking at August and September, when there would be conferences for sure in those areas, yeah. that uh, you're, there's a much higher probability. Yeah, great, great discounts and deals <laughs> during that season. Yeah, that's <laughs> but, right, that's uh, right. You definitely want to make sure your travel insurance is up to date. So that's great. right. Well, do you want to walk us through some of the popular areas that you think to, you know, that people would want to stay on the island and maybe, you know, kind of the pros and cons of the different areas? Sure, I'd be happy to know. Our preference has always been to the west coast of the island. Now this, the west coast is sometimes called the platinum coast. It has these beautiful sugary sand beaches. And it's also because it's facing more of the Caribbean side. It is is quite protected. And so I know for us traveling with kids, I mean, they're older now, but when they were little, we'd have them in the water and the waves, the, the beaches are beautiful and the waves are quite gentle. And so, and there's a lot of beautiful hotels along the West Coast and, um, you know, nice villas, Airbnbs you can rent and that sort of thing. But it also tends to be the pricier area. Um, yeah, now Platinum the, Coast, yeah. definitely. It's like has to exactly. do with gold and platinum, like riches as well. That's how it got its nickname, That's, right? All the fancy houses. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Exactly. Now, I have not stayed on the South Coast, sort of just east of Bridgetown, which is the main city and where the cruise ships come in, comes in, come in and that sort of thing. But there are some lovely houses down the South Coast, too, and some nice beaches. Over on the east. The East Coast is quite wild facing the Atlantic. It's really beautiful. We always go for drives over there. Yeah. But I'd say, you know, with, you know, traveling as a family, the beaches aren't the best for us. But certainly for surfers or if you were looking for a romantic getaway, I think it would be amazing. Um, but how about you, Kimberly? Where did you stay when you were when you were there? Uh, I had two opportunities to stay in two different places. So I stayed on the just at, like you said, the South Shore, I guess, is what it would be called. But, you know, it's right. kind of towards the West still. So I guess you'd right, say like, right. Southwest. yeah, and so it was um, near Bridgetown, not quite at Bridgetown, but near Bridgetown. And it was a right. waves resort, uh, which okay. is I'm trying to think now I'm blanking. I think Elegato. Is that the name of the, um, the hotel brand? Um, is it possibly? Uh, is it Elegant Hotels? Yeah, it might be Elegant Hotels. That sounds yes, right. Yes. I'm trying to. Yeah, like, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Right. I think that's another right. one of theirs. Right. Yes. Nice. Yeah. So I stayed there to start with. And then when we moved over to the West Coast and we stayed at the Hilton Barbados, which was a lovely resort. And definitely uh, I agree with everything you said about the island because we drove around the island one day, we actually had a driver who just drove us around the whole island. And um, we did a hike kind of over there by the 
more central coast headed east, we went to a place called the Niki, which is, you know, yeah, it's um, just like a little kind of almost like a retreat getaway up high elevation. And yeah, so we went over there and did a little hike around there and a little hike through kind of on the east side. And it is wild and definitely kind of, you know, not developed. It's I think you could probably find maybe an Airbnb or you know, vacation rentals on that side of the island if you didn't want towns. But the big thing, right? right. Yeah. The big thing I think is, uh, what was the two, what are the two main towns on the West Coast that are kind of the spots that you want to be close to? I mean, Bridgetown is kind of on the South, but it's Holt, Holt Town? Holt. Yeah, Holt Town. And then if I pronounce it correctly, I think it's Spates Town. Spates Spates Town. Yeah. Spates Town. Yeah. 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 And I know that there's a new, for families, there's a brand new beaches hotel that's being built kind of around those two, I want to say around Whole Town, and it looks like it's going to be amazing. It's supposed to be completed by like 2020. I'm sure it will be amazing. And, you know, as we've discussed, anything along that coast, I think, is uh, is going to be a winner. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a great island. I mean, I, I don't remember what they said. Something like, I want to say it was 26 miles to drive round trip around the island. Does that seem right? Or maybe it's a cross. Do you know what? I, I think it could be because we have yeah. spent, um, we uh, will pro- get to this a little bit later, but we've always rented a car there. We do quite a bit of exploring, but we have spent definitely full days driving around. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's it's nice though. You can get around and I wouldn't say, I mean, I thought the roads were all well kept and fairly easy to understand. I would say in some ways there weren't a lot of signage, but if you have a good gps or even a road map you'd probably be okay yes Once- and you know what the thing is too the other thing i found um you know normally my husband is driven but i'll take a few trips on my own and you know it's different for me driving on the other side of the road so yeah. i always a little bit nervous <laughs> but i find the drivers to be very courteous yeah and so little things you know on a busy road if you're trying to turn turn onto it that they'll give you the room to go they'll wait yep. for you so it's it's not as intimidating as it might seem i have to say that that is one of the things that actually made me fall in love with barbados is just the people. They are some of the friendliest, most welcoming, you know, like people I've ever citizens. Well, you know, they're just amazing. I absolutely agree with you. And one of the things I noticed, and on our last trip, we had visited another island before going to Barbados. And the first thing I noticed about Barbados, and I'd forgotten from our previous trips, is that as we drove around the islands, anyone we passed along the road waved at us. Yeah. Smiled gave us a wave and just made us feel welcome. Yeah. Yeah. It's really great. And they have, you know, I have to say it was kind of cute because they have um, school uniforms for all the kids. And one of the days when we were driving around, it was like the start of school and all these little kids were walking to, you know, school or buses and Mm. they use, you know, the, the local bus. I think there's some, there's something they have school buses, but there's some special thing with busing that our driver was telling us all about to keep kids safe. But yeah, the kids all have, you know, there's certain color uniforms that you know, just shows what school they go to. It's just really fun to see. Oh my gosh. I remember driving, driving past a few of the groups myself. They're just adorable, aren't they? (laughs) It's adorable. (laughs) Yep. So did you have a favorite area that you guys like to, you know, kind of hang out in? Well, yes, you know, and of course, I'm going to sound like a broken record here. But even when so we've stayed in different places um, on the island towards the West Coast, and sometimes closer to the beach and sometimes further back, depending on our budget. But we just always find ourselves migrating towards the beaches on the West Coast. And so you know, the first time we went to the island, we stayed north of Spatestown in a little place called um, Little Good Harbor, a little hotel. And we stayed there because it had sort of one, two and three bedroom suites. And with an infant and a toddler, you know, you tend to have to spend more time around your lodgings because you you know, have nap times and that sort of thing. Yeah. And so we stayed at this place and, and spent quite a bit of time there. But we'd always whenever we were going out to the beach, we'd be driving back to these these West Coast, these sort of a little further south from us, but these beaches. So we just always tend to be going back to the same spots. Yeah. And I should mention that all the beaches are public beaches. So basically if you can, parking doesn't look that prevalent though. So (laughs) it might be a little tricky, like finding a place to park, but you can find right. And we often found that we're just, there's a lot of little side streets that we would park up because on that main road that goes along the beach, I don't know what it's called or highway, it might even be. Yeah, yeah. Um, you're right. There's not a lot of spots along the side of the road. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yep. <laughs> 
Great. So now that we're talking about hotels, why don't you kind of share a few mm-hmm. of your favorites that you've stayed in or what ones you think are great for families? Sure, sure. And so, as I mentioned, this little little good harbor that we stayed at the, on the first trip, that was great because of the, you know, the the one, two and three bedroom suites, as well as the fact that they had kitchens so we could self cater, which, you know, Barbados is not an inexpensive island. It can get exactly. quite pricey. So anytime that you can you know, make your own breakfast and that is, is certainly helpful. We've also stayed at, um, you mentioned them before, but Elegant Hotels is a hotel group that has a number of properties on the island. And we have stayed at their Tamarind on the West Coast for a few nights. And we found that to be lovely and wonderful for families. It's Big in that it has, uh, you know, a couple choices of restaurants, several pools, all the beach toys, a kids club and that sort of thing without feeling overwhelmingly large. Uh, And so it still had a boutique feel about it. Mm. They also, I haven't stayed at this one, but they also have another property that's great for families called Turtle Beach, which is more along uh, the south coast, close to Bridgetown. But we have also, as I mentioned, rented a few Airbnbs on the island And then more recently, we going with my parents, they were very generously treated us to this, the more recent trip. And we stayed at a villa villa on Mullins Bay, which was fantastic. So we've kind of, we've gone from the super budget Airbnb vacation rental to several of the hotels, and then also had the experience of staying in a very nice villa, um, which we may never have the chance to do again, but it was wonderful. (laughs) Yeah, it sounds nice. I know that there's, yeah, it's definitely, I think what you said is a great reminder to people is it's not an inexpensive island at all. That was, I was kind of, I was kind of surprised by that. It's, you know, I mean, it's pricey even just getting, you know, food and drinks and yeah, it can be like, you'll see, I think they have beer specials, but (laughs) if you're into anything else, it's, you know, you'll see the numbers a little higher than you expect. Yeah, so. I think so. And I think for me, it's always a reminder whenever we go to the growth grocery store to try to, or, you know, sometimes we've gone to the fish market to buy some local fish, but to try to buy the stuff that the locals are buying instead of falling into the habits and buying the stuff you're used to from back home that is, you know, obviously imported and going to be more expensive. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Yeah, that's so true. It's- and I will say it's also <laughs> one of the things, you know, that, makes you also want to maybe research all inclusives and that might be right. a you know good, good option. Point. So that's what my experience was to start out with at the Elegant Hotels of the Waves Resort and Spa that's there right. um, just outside of Bridgetown. And that one is right on the water, beautiful stretch right. of beach. And of course it's all inclusive. So they've got some, you know, boats down there and kayaks and they've got a swimming area you can go on. And they even do like yoga classes out on their balcony. I mean, it was, it was a That's beautiful so nice. property. Really, really nice. Their adults pool. They, the properties crosses the main road. So that's, you have to be careful, like crossing back and forth, but there is an adults sure, only. Road. Yeah, exactly. There is an adults <laughs> only pool on, you know, the other side of the road, but the beach side, there's like a smaller pool kind of that's at like right next to the road. It's kind of weird. So it's not exactly as atmospheric, but if your kids want a pool, that's there, but most of it is going to be, you're going to be down on the sand and um, enjoying the water. And so it was really great and it was all inclusive. I thought the food at their main restaurant was just it was good. It was okay. You know, so it was kind of typical all inclusive. Right. It's not going to be amazing, but they did have a um, Asian fusion restaurant that was at the adults only area um, across the street. And it was, it was amazing. I thought it was delicious. Uh, that one. They, oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, and amazing. you know what? I should mention that I, I forgot to mention that about the Tamarind, the other elegant um, hotel that we stayed at, that they had an all inclusive option and then they had a breakfast only yeah. option. And we, although I wouldn't really describe us as foodies at the same time we really like to get out on the island and explore the different restaurants that we read about whether it's a food cart or something fancier so we just did the breakfast only option and that was great it was a really it was a super nice breakfast and then we could you know head out for the day and see where we ended up for dinner so yeah that's great yeah and it is something I mean the island everyone's so friendly and there are a lot of restaurants just be prepared to you know pay a pay a good price but yeah there's so many it seems like so many great restaurants. They had a, exactly. a dining out evening for the writers because it was through a travel writers conference and everybody was going to different restaurants. And so there's so many great ones around the island. Oh, that's great. And, you know, in three trips, I've only scratched the surface. There's a few I keep going back to, but, you know, every every time we've gone, there's been a whole bunch more to try. So. Yeah. So since we were chatting about, you know, 
trying local foods and eating at some of the local restaurants. Do you have any favorite things that or places that you want to share with the listeners? I do have a couple that we keep going back to. Um, One of them is a place called the Lone Star Cafe. And it is along the West Coast once again. And it's a bit, it's a hotel as well as a restaurant. It's a little bit swanky, I'd say. And it's, we usually go for lunch and it's a bit of a pricey lunch, but it's something we like to treat ourselves to. But it's on a super beautiful beach. And one of the things that's been super great about that place for us is that It's right on the ocean. You can even sit with your feet in the sand. There's tables right in the sand on this beautiful beach. So we tend to make an afternoon of it. We'll go for lunch and then we'll hang out and do some swimming. We've even seen sea turtles just right in front when we've been snorkeling. But when our kids were younger, what was especially nice about this place is that they could only sit at the table for so long. So as soon as they were done, they'd just sit right in front of us and play in the sand or play in the water with these gentle lapping waves. So it made it, you know, as a parent, we're always looking to have a really nice experience. But also, you know, we we have these children we're looking after as well. So it's, you know, we found that to be a really nice afternoon. Uh, But that is a bit of a splurge. There's, and I don't know if you, Kimberly, went to Crane Beach at all when you were there, but there's this, on the south coast, there's this beautiful beach called Crane Beach, and right near there, there's this deli called Cutters, and they have wonderful food, and you can even, if you call in the morning, you can even get them to make a picnic for you, and you can take it to Crane Beach, and Crane Beach is a bit of a wild beach, so it's, you know, it's not super safe for, for swimming, it's more of We'll go out and jump in the waves with the kids, but keep them very close. Mm-hmm. But it's a beautiful spot. And that's um, so that's something that we always do. They also have the most incredible rum punch at Cutters, which Barbados is quite famous for. And you can take it to go. So we would sometimes bring that back to our Airbnb and enjoy that over our, our week. <laughs> nice. Those sound like great ones. I'm trying How to remember. Yeah. Go, I'm trying to remember where we uh, dined at. And now I'm blanking. Because right. we Did ate you mostly, try... Yeah. Did you try any of the uh, fish sandwiches or the cutters that they're quite famous for? No. Are you talking about the, um, oh, they call them something. And there's yeah. like a, they're like a curry sandwich and there's a famous, like, you know, McDonald's. Is it the fish shack Cuzzes? No. Oh, oh Cuzzes. Okay. Yeah. No. Cuzzes is big. I've heard of Cuzzes. Yeah. That's. Yeah. So Cuzzes, I've never, I have tried the fish sandwiches, the cutters, uh, which are delicious, but Cuzzes is the one that seems to be the most famous. And it's literally, it's right in Bridgetown, I believe by it's, the Radisson or the Hilton, right? The You've Hilton. probably seen it. Yeah. It's the right Hilton. by the Hilton. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's right at like the gates of the Hilton, right there at that local public beach. That's just outside of the Hilton main gates. It's in that parking right. lot and it's a literally right. a shack and you get like two, o- you have two options, like spicy or not spicy. And that's it. <laughs> right. And I have never been there when it's actually been open, but I keep, every time I go, I keep saying that I have to try their, their fish sandwiches. <laughs> yeah. Now I will just say that that area, that beach area and parking lot, maybe not the best place at night. Uh, based on ah, something okay. that three people, three other writers had mentioned, not, you know, necessarily dangerous, but just um, approaches about drug purchasing. <laughs> so Interesting. Just, okay, yeah, well, that, sure. that's important information. So that's many. Information. Yeah, that's what I just want to give people, you know, be honest in this podcast. So everybody yeah. knows. But uh, during the daytime and on the weekends, it's like families and grandmas and little kids and everybody out there playing. And even at sunset, right. people are out there taking sunset photos. And in the mornings, they do the polo horses. They bring the polo horses out there and bathe them and let them soak in the ocean water and stuff. And so it's really a great space. But just, you know, once it becomes dark or late at night, not not a great space to hang out. You know what? Good to know. And I have to say, my my days of hanging around cities after dark are long gone. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, any city, right? I'm not going to necessarily want to do that in Seattle either. So yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So what do you think people need to do and see when they're staying in Barbados? Oh, my goodness. Okay, so one of the reasons that I love Barbados so much is because there is so much to do. So obviously, most people are there for a beach holiday. But 
you know, you can go around the island and explore the beaches. And there's so many different type of beaches, but there's also some neat places to visit, like Folkestone Marine Park, which is along the West Coast. It's a protected area. And certainly, you know, if you're with the family and have kids that are new to snorkeling, or I'm actually not even a very confident swimmer, but I like snorkeling. It's a great spot to get out there and see some beautiful fish and sometimes some sea turtles. Um, and I don't know if you did this when you were there, Kimberly, but there's also some very cool caves to visit on the island. So one of those places is called Harrison's Cave, and Barbados is made of limestone, but in Harrison's Cave, the water that's sort of dripped through the limestone has formed these incredible sort of corridors underwater, and you can take a tram through them, and that's, it's a pretty fun thing to do. Mm -hmm. Um, There's also, on our last trip, we went to a place called the Animal Flower Cave, which is on the north coast of the island. And it a little bit, um, it's similar to Harrison Cave, except it opens up to the ocean. So you go down into the cave system, and then there's these beautiful almost windows out to the sea and pools that you can swim in, which are pretty cool. What else? You also mentioned the, the polo horses that you see down at the beach. One of my favorite things to do, and I've done this twice, but without the family is to get in the car early in the morning and drive down to, I think it might be called Pebbles Beach where you were talking about where Cousin's Fitch Shack is. And I've just sat on the beach and walked, watched the grooms take the horses in for a swim into the water. And they often swim out to the boats with them. And it's a pretty, it's a pretty beautiful thing to watch, but there's certainly, there's also a ton of tours and stuff you can do on the Island. And because we always rent a car, we do it ourselves, but, yeah. but what did you enjoy? What did you get to um, enjoy while you were there? So I was there before the conference. I went early on a spa, fam, oh, so nice. spa, spa tour. So I checked out some of the spas and <laughs> pampered myself. So it was kind oh, that's of, gorgeous. yeah, so I definitely think Barbados is great for that sort of thing. So yeah. one of the um, places I think that stands out in my head, of course, the most that you definitely, if you are a spa goer, you might want to check out and that's Sandy Lane. And Sandy oh, Lane, yes, so nice. yeah, it is, I mean, it is the... <laughs> the high end luxury of luxury. It's where, you know, Rihanna and Mark Wahlberg and <laughs> probably tons of celebrities that you can't even name. That is where they stay. So uh, Sandy Lane is just a really high end resort, but they do have a spa on site as well. And so you can book spa services and get to have a spa service and enjoy the day spa. Now, I will note that you do not get to enjoy the grounds of the hotel if you're having the spa service, which two of the people on our trip found out because there's a pool right there at the same at the entrance of the spa and they went for a swim and they were actually asked to leave the pool because they weren't guests of the hotel. So they take right. the yeah, so they they take the hotel guests part very seriously, but the day spa itself is just gorgeous. They've got you know, steam rooms and sauna rooms, and um, they've got a hydrotherapy pool and then just a basic hot tub as well. And the um, massage I had was beautiful. The rooms are gorgeous. So if you're looking for a little pampering and relaxation, the Sandy Lane is great. And if you're doing it as a couple's getaway, they have special couple massage rooms. So um, and they have like a little you know, hot tub or plunge pool on a, you know, kind of private patio. So after your massage, you could soak there for a few minutes. Oh my so gosh, it sounds really amazing. And it's it's funny you should say that because I do recall once, I think on one of maybe our second trip to Barbados, I wanted to go take a look around the hotel. And yeah. so we pulled up and I went to go in and take a look and was promptly escorted back to the door. Yes, isn't it funny? <laughs> like they, I mean, it's, it's high end. Like they are very, because they have celebrities there, they take it very carefully. We, you know, we're there as media and they told us we were not allowed to take photos. Um, wow. and so we're like, really? Right. Okay. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So just so you know, it's, yeah, they take it seriously, but it is, it's great. And it's right it's near, special. um, same neighborhood as where I guess, uh, Rihanna lives. And so she's right. a big, she's now their, their ambassador. She's from Barbados and, uh, there's a drive called Rihanna drive. You can actually see the house that she grew up in. And, um, yeah, so it's kind of, you know, she's a big, big name there. Oh my gosh. I feel like I need to do a trip without kids. Yeah. To Barbados. Yeah. Spot the, trip. The spa trip was really nice. It was nice. And then, uh, like you said, we drove around the island one day, and we also went up, like I said, to the Naniki, and we um, did yoga kind of on their patio. They have a yoga teacher, and so we did a session of yoga and a little kind of forest hike, which was really cool. They have some crazy trees down there that I was just enamored with. They also have these, like, crazy centipedes that, according to our guide, they're not poisonous ones, (laughs) but they look pretty, you know, they're, like, bright black, so... Oh my gosh, do you have this on? Do you have any pictures of this on your Instagram? I want to see these. Uh, Not on Instagram. Let me see. 
I might have it on Instagram stories. I'll have to share it with you. <laughs> okay. I'd yeah. love to see that. That's yep. interesting. Yeah. yeah and so so that, and that's cool. a place I've never been. So now I, I definitely need a, a fourth trip to Barbados. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it's it's more like budget also. You know, it's like these little kind of, you know, because like I said, it's really, I was scared for the driver who drove us up there, but you guys are probably I, adventurous enough. You could do it, but it is tiny, like one way street type things, you know, like you oh, pull I'm over sure. and let someone get in and out. It is, it's insane. But um, yeah, it's kind of towards the central of the island and it had a beautiful view of the east coast um kind of oh, from a huge. distance from their property and then yeah they have like little apartments so you can get like a one bedroom and it has a kitchen and all of that so you you know oh, it might awesome. be perfect for you guys wanting to cook your own meals right right yeah. or a girlfriend getaway or something, exactly right? yeah it's definitely and they they like to focus on the wellness retreat type idea i think of it uh, in honesty on my end I just thought it it seems like more the place for like backpackers or really adventurous travelers who don't want to be next to the beach or in the heart of cities sure. um so yeah but right and I think also I mean as you mentioned I mean I've gone through all stages of travel starting with my backpacking days and I still wanted to be able to go to places like Barbados so it's an expensive island but if you can find a way to do it and find something that fits your budget that's that's great yeah yeah so one mm-hmm. thing talking about you know getting around the island is there do you have any tips on how families should get around because it says you said you rent a car but have you ever you know had any experience with like the water taxi or taxis or ubers or um even the bus system because i heard someone use that (laughs) this is really interesting because barbados has a very robust bus system and the buses go everywhere including as you described those little one-way roads they go all over the island including to Harrison's cave, which is quite deep into the island. And, and so I have not taken the buses, but I want to just to have that experience. Yeah. And they're really reasonable. I think they're about $2 yep. Barbados, which I think is one, one, one US, US to take a ride. So, and they're running all the time, but I have not done it. It's just something I keep thinking I'm going to do. So we have always rented a car. And a lot of that is just because we want to see as much as we possibly can when we're, we're there. And we rent, there's a couple of local car rental companies and they're right at the airport. One of them is called Stouts and one of them um, is Drivematic. I think it's local as well. But we found that they offer uh, the best prices for, you know, rather than going with an international chain, they just seem to offer and your insurance and all that stuff seems to be included. So anyway, we found them to be very, very good. Oh, that's a great tip. Yeah. And I heard, I know with the buses, uh, there is a little bit of a tip on, the colors like one the Uh green bus is I don't remember now but there's something about them if they're green they're government ones or if they're blue they're government ones and the other color are privately owned and um, some of the privately owned ones are like called party buses and they can either play crazy music sometimes they drive a little (laughs) crazy Um, so yeah there's there's definitely there's something about the buses but I can't remember it now but I I, if I was a part of a family I probably wouldn't try the bus system but if you were you know solo travel or you know part of a couple or girlfriends or something then yeah you'd probably well that's and that's exactly it is that you know on our first trip we're dealing with you know, car seats and that yes. sort of thing and kids yep. falling asleep and waiting. I mean, any kind of waiting with a toddler is painful, let alone at the at a bus stop in the hot sun. Right? Exactly. So. Yeah. And I think that if you are, you know, traveling with young kids or you're travel, you know, you don't want to drive or you don't want to deal with it, you can definitely get a transfer from the airport to your hotel, pick a hotel that's on the West Coast and you can easily get around, you know, na- maybe stay in your whole town and just kind yeah. of, you know, enjoy your time there. And you can always the hotel can always help you arrange a taxi to a restaurant or you can probably arrange they can help you arrange a private driver around the island of you know, course sort of yeah and we, so we have used taxis there as well on the odd night where we've decided yeah. to go out for a nice dinner and have a um a few cocktails that uh, the taxi has been our our savior so <laughs> yeah and there's a water taxi have you ever tried that I have not. No, so, where, does, where does it go? Yeah, I don't know. I, I have to research. I don't know enough about it. But when I was at, now I'm blanking on the, uh, one of the hotels we checked out and had a, I guess you would call it a spa treatment at, they, it was really great, but their hotel had had some um, damage from a recent earthquake, I guess they said. Oh, okay. Um, I mean, it wasn't anything traumatic, but the spa was right. just closed. But anyways, we were, they took us out on a little boat ride just to kind of see the coast. But one of the things is that the, 
they they mentioned that the water taxi goes to all these places and they're like, oh, there's a water taxi. And I, so I was confused and I tried to ask them about it and they were like, oh, yeah, right. you know, just kind of it's obvious, but <laughs> I couldn't quite oh. get the answer to it. But supposedly <laughs> there's right. a water taxi. So I'm sure if you research that or even ask your hotel, they would know how that works. But that's, it's a way that I option. guess you can. Yeah, you can get down the coast. So if you're on the West Coast, I'm guessing that's where it's at. And um, it would probably be an easy way to get from you know, one yeah, city to could, hotels and stuff like that. Sure. And, and it walk. could be an, an inexpensive uh, boat tour. Yeah, exactly. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Cool. Nice. Well, so are there any final tips that you want to, you know, share with our listeners? I have a couple of things that are on my head, but I'd love to know what you think they need to know about visiting. Well, I think, you know, you touched on it already, but I, I just want to really encourage people if they're, if they do visit Barbados to get out and meet people, um, you know, don't just stay on your resort, go to the local restaurant or the, you know, the local fish shack or they'll try the rum bar if you can. <laughs> and the other thing is that Barbados has a lot of great community events. So you mentioned the polo horses. Well, on our last trip, we, on Barbados.org, the Barbados, uh, I, I believe that's the Barbados tourism website, you can look up polo matches or horse racing or cricket matches. Mm -hmm. And so on this last trip, our timing worked with a polo match and we went and it, it was a really fun inexpensive local event for us to attend. We'd never been to a polo match before and super family friendly too. So I just think it's um, like go and become part of the community. Yeah. That's, that's my advice. That is so great. I absolutely agree. And I think it's a perfect Island to do that on. It's yeah. I, I yeah, think, I think so. What about, what about you? What, um, what do you have to, to share with people? I think that that's the big thing also is just to not be scared to talk to the locals and ask what you should do and be, you know, use this as a way to kind of be adventurous, but in a very, right. I guess, like closed in space. It feels, it feels like it's okay. I mean, um, like any major place, I wouldn't go walking around some of the streets late at night, but I mean, during the daytime and during, I mean, go explore, have fun. I felt very safe there. It looked like a great, uh, country. It's known, it's supposedly it's, you know, one of, I can't remember the fact now. Somebody told us, uh, we were talking with the Barbados people and it's something like one of the safest, um, countries in the world, I think, based on some, um, oh, some met metric, yeah, met they, some global yeah, ranking yeah. type thing. So definitely, you know, good to know that. And just, yeah, like you said, I think that's a great idea is to, you know, look up some of those matches. I do know also that they have a carnival. So just like, oh, you know, fun. South American carnivals. Right. Uh, so skimpy clothes, <laughs> FYI, but it's I'm a big go party. Do some sit -ups right now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's a big party festival. Um, so you might want to either, you know, it's probably a peak season for expenses as well. So maybe avoid that if that's not your dream. But if you want to enjoy a, you know, carnival, then maybe that's oh, the place like you want to do uh, you know, another, just to, you know. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Kevin. Oh, I was just going to say another thing is, yeah, English is spoken. No issues with language barriers. And then I'm trying to think. I used my credit card anywhere, so I didn't have any money issues. I'm trying to think of. Did you do, go to an ATM and do any? Uh, yeah, I, you know what? Normally, so yeah, yes, we. I believe we actually had some on our most recent trip. We had some. Um, Barbados dollars uh, from our last trip. Um, but so we came with a few dollars, used our credit card everywhere. And the odd time we needed cash, we just went to an ATM and pulled up a small amount of cash. Yeah. You know, so we, we didn't have a huge need for cash, but just for, you know, it's on the beach buying a yeah. fresh coconut or something, yeah. you know, which, which, you know, is very refreshing and a nice thing to be able to do. But obviously, they're not going to take a credit card for that. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You, if you're going to be hanging out, you probably want some cash also for just tipping or, you know, easy, right. easy paying for drivers. I know we had a driver pick us up to take us to a little place in town and he didn't accept credit cards. And we were all like, uh, you know, and then he was, right. gonna, he was charging quite the exchange rate to pay with us dollars. He knew, he <laughs> right. knew who he had, right. he picked us up at the Hilton. So he knew ex he had his, <laughs> he had his, you know, system down, down pat. Yeah. And it worked but, out. Yeah. And you know, it's funny you were mentioning, um, you know, people off and ask me, and I'm sure they ask you too, as much as you travel about safety in certain destinations. But you know, just as you said, I wouldn't wander around Bridgetown in the middle of the night, I wouldn't walk on beaches at night, but I also wouldn't do that in my home city of Vancouver. So, you know, 
it's it's just you need to use common sense. And I've always tell my kids on these on these trips or even at home, you know, they if they have an iPod or something, it's not something that we're you're flashing around that's tucked away, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's just basic, you know, rules when you travel, just be a smart traveler. Sure. And exactly. Yeah, exactly. yeah, that's pretty much it there. I will say two other things I wanted to mention that were interesting facts. There's a big interest in George Washington there because George Washington came to Barbados when he was a young kid right. because he had a sick right. brother. So there's a whole big, you know, tourism industry around George Washington there. So if you're a big history buff, that might be up your alley. You might want to check um, that stuff out because there's also really, you know, I was just in Memphis at the National Civil Rights Museum and there's a lot of ugly history in a way a bit with the South of the United States and Barbados with slave trade. Right. So yes. um, there's definitely some history there too of, you know, how Barbados is tightly tied into the U S and um, so if you're a history buff, check those things out. And when you're packing for your trip to Barbados, don't pack any camouflage. Have you experienced uh, that or read that anywhere? Do you know what? I, I, I have experienced this in other places. I did yes. not know that about Barbados. Is that is it reserved for the military? Yes. Is that why? Yeah, it's illegal. It's reserved for the military. Um, also, drones are illegal on Barbados. They will be, okay. according to what I read, they will be confiscated at um, customs if you're found with a drone or with camouflage. Uh, so just make sure you don't pack those things. And then if you do have young kids who don't maybe want to wait patiently at the airport through customs, they do have expedited customs processing there. You can pay a fee That's and somebody right. will meet you. I have not done that, but I've heard that. Yeah. Yeah. The travel writers did that. They did that for oh, us, for great. the travel writers. And it was nice. We just flew right through. And um, so that's kind of a nice little perk, but we still had to that wait for our, perk, wait for perk. our luggage with everyone else. But, um, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you know, <laughs> if you, I mean, hey, I, no like, yeah, no it came likes fast. To stand in a line. <laughs> exactly. Well, with little kids, right? Every once in a while, it's like they've been on this plane for who knows how many hours, and then they're going to have to sit still oh, again sure. for another hour. Yeah. So, yeah. I did this at uh, London Heathrow about uh, two weeks ago. I was on my own, and you know, after a, a long haul flight, having to stand in line for customs, that I mean, where it was at least an hour, and I was thinking, "Gosh, how am I going to do this when I'm 80?" Yeah. <laughs> It's crazy. Some of those custom lines build up. And I feel like I always, as I'm walking towards them, you see the mass from another plane comes right in front right. of you and you can't get there quite right. fast enough. Exactly. You know, don't exactly. stop at the bathroom. Like go to the bathroom right before you land so that you don't have to stop at the bathroom until you're that's on the right. other side. Yep. I feel like that's it's how you can pass a lot of people. Sure. Yeah, definitely. It's so sad that I actually have these thoughts. But uh, that's great advice. That's great advice about that. I'd forgotten about that expedited uh, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, nice. option. I mean, it's yeah. certainly a small airport it is nothing like London Heathrow so I don't even right, know what right. the weight would be it's probably pretty quickly but just so you know it is it is an option I think a lot of hotels allow you to add it on to, with you know through their concierge probably even right 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 well do you have any advice for families who are going to take a trip to Barbados where they should maybe capture a great family photo Oh, yeah. this is this is a very good question because I am, and you may be the same, Kimberly, but I take all the photos in our family, and I am almost never in the photos. And I've often joked that my website looks like the single dad website because I'm <laughs> I'm never represented. But I have used a service twice on Barbados called Flytographer. Oh, you, you've nice. probably heard of it. You yes. may have used them before, but where you go onto their website and you book a photo package. And they hook you up with a photographer in your destination. And so in the case of Barbados, we've done it twice now where we've used Flytographer and booked a one-hour package with a fellow named Andrew. And basically what happens is a few days before you're set to meet him, he sends you an email and you arrange, um, you sort of work out the finer details of exactly what time you're going to meet and where you're going to meet. And maybe even, you know, he'll answer some questions on what you should wear. And we have both times met him on one of the West Coast beaches and he's just done a quick little one hour photo shoot with us. And then a few days later, he sends us the photos. And that's been great. But as far as if you're not going to do a photography package, I definitely say, you know, capturing that golden hour of four to five o'clock and maybe on the West Coast where you're going to get that sunset too could be great. But I know, Kimberly, you're a proper photographer, so you maybe have some better, you have some better tips. <laughs> yeah, I don't I was trying to think of this because, yeah, those, you know shooting into the sunset like on the beach everybody loves those photos but they're really hard to light with you know typical amateur 
photography equipment because you're probably not carrying light bouncers and um, lights with you. (laughs) So uh, people are going to be tempted to do that. But I would say you probably want to make sure you can angle yourself in a way where, yeah, you get the right foreground lighting like on your faces because so many people don't realize how that works because that's the only that's the only you know alert to say but if you have you know somehow you're able to get it where the light's bouncing off of a building or something and you can still get that sunset you can kind of make it work but it's a little trickier so just be careful on those portrait sunset shots if you don't have right you know professional photography gear but that would definitely (laughs) be what I would go for it would just be tricky playing with your lighting and getting it the right sure. setup. But sure, if you're sure, comfortable sure. shooting, you could make it work. Uh, and then I would probably say, yeah, I think the beaches are what you would have to do. I think if I was going to pick a place, that's probably what I would shoot because that's where it's gorgeous. And the water is just beautiful. That spot at Hilton Barbados, they're, Oh my goodness, so many amazing photography options because like I said, that little beach, I cannot think of the name of that beach right now where the Cuz's food shack is right Right. at the entrance to the Hilton. It has all these anchored boats kind of out there in the, in the Bay Lagoon area. And it's just beautiful backdrop. And then the sunsets over there are the most amazing sunsets I've seen. I I did share a Barbados picture on the property of Hilton. Barbados is an old fort and there are all these old cannons and kind of a brick wall. And that's, that's one of the pictures you'll see it. It's the pinky, orange one that I've shared. And it is an excellent photo for like an excellent spot to get pictures. And it would be really great for um, kind of a silhouette, you know, at night, nice. shoot the, you know, kids maybe looking out or doing some cute little thing and find a way to work around there. So I would say head you know, to Hilton Barbados and just kind of play around. And it's, it's located kind of on a, I don't know how to explain it, like a peninsula type area between a bay like it wraps around so you can play with the lighting whether you're on one side of the beach or you move over to the other uh i had a lot of like you should have seen at sunset we were all like running around kind of i had beautiful reflections from the pools like early sunset but then you know later we moved over to that public beach area and it was just gorgeous Oh my gosh, that's great. And you know, it's funny, this reminded me that because I'm not a, I am trying to take better pictures, but I'm not a photographer. Sometimes what I do when I go in to visit a place is I actually just go on Instagram and I take a look at some of the best photos for that donation, uh, destination on Instagram and go, oh my gosh, that's a great spot. Yeah. Or that's a great spot. <laughs> yeah, that's a great tip. I know Tamara does that a lot. And I know a lot of Instagrammers, like Instagram influencers do that because I was in a right. trip in Hawaii and people like this one girl I with and she kept saying well I have to find this shack that's somewhere on this road (laughs) it's like oh my goodness so it's kind of funny but yeah oh that is funny great well we will ask you our last question that we ask all of our guests and that is what do you wear when you're traveling okay this is I actually feel very embarrassed that I can't answer this question properly because uh, prior to being, to running my family travel website, I was a clothing buyer for a decade. So I should be able to answer this very easily. (laughs) Um, But I do have a uniform when I'm on Caribbean islands and that is, it may not be a particular brand, but I like to be ready for anything. So when we're heading out for the day, I am always packing a bag full of towels and my snorkel beer and sunscreen so that if we have a moment where, you know, we see an amazing beach or something that we can just hop out of the car and go that we can't, we don't miss out on these things. So typically what I'm wearing is either a little romper or a sundress with my bathing suit under on underneath so I can just hop into that water whenever I want. <laughs> nice. That's good. Yeah. It's kind of, it's nice that you have a fluid way of, you know, being ready for any adventure that comes your way. Right. And don't think I don't fill up my bag with all kinds of clothes that I don't wear as well. There's always a couple pairs of nice pants for an evening out that I never wear. Yep. Yep. <laughs> I, I actually, so what, what you, what is your, what was your Barbados uniform? Um, I did basically a pair of old Navy shorts. They're like, like the cotton basic. They were black though. Um, but those, okay. they, nice. they work well. They seem, you know, kind of to have a little bit of a wider leg so you can stay like the air moves. You don't get sweaty and everything. Nice. And then just basic cute t-shirts that match with it. And then I, I pack like color schemes, right? So I just picked those as black and then I picked tops t-shirts that 
went with that. And that seemed pretty good. I did uh, carry a day bag with me all the time with my swimsuit and a cover up in it. Uh, so Perfect. that's the one thing I did there. So instead of, right, right, yeah, right. And you made a very good point. You definitely don't want anything clingy, no denim, no, I mean, I I have a pair of loose jean shorts that I bring along, but definitely no, no, um, clingy jeans or anything. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, we had beautiful weather when I was there, but even I will say humidity is crazy there. Like it reminded me of being in the South. So, um, it's, you know, there's definitely humidity there. So be, be aware of that. And I asked, <laughs> I even asked one of our, our driver at one point, I was like, you know, it's really humid. Is there a season when is this, you know, a peak season for it being humid? Or, you right. know, is there another season when it's not so humid? And he just said, no, like, it's just always, <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> good to know. <laughs> It's true. It's true. I know we were there last in March, which is part of the dry season. But, you know, I was on a garden. My mother is an avid gardener. And so we went on a garden tour. And I just remember it just we were in basically a tropical jungle. Yeah, 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 (laughs) yeah. Good to know. Great. Well, thank you so much, Tara. We appreciate all this great information about Barbados. And why don't you tell our listeners where they can find you online and maybe share where you're headed next? Okay, well, that's great. Well, thank you for having me on. This has been good fun. I love talking about Barbados. Probably the easiest one, you know, my I, we mentioned my website, Pint Size Pilot. That's where I post all about our adventures, um, as well as in the case of Barbados, I have a guide to visiting Barbados with kids, all our favorite places. But if you just want to know what we're up to this week, you can follow me on Instagram at Pint Size Pilot. And as far as upcoming trips, we're heading into the winter season now. And with um, the family, we like to do quite a bit of skiing. So living in Vancouver, we're quite close to Whistler. We're going to head up there. And we're also going to try somewhere we haven't been before. We're going to head to uh, Jackson Hole, Wyoming this winter. I've heard heard wonderful places about it or wonderful things about it. And we so we're looking forward to a visit. And then finally, our big trip that we're planning is... Well, there was a great seat sale. And so I had flights back to the Caribbean, to the island of St. Martin. Uh But we haven't figured out. Yeah, so for March. But we haven't quite figured out where we're going from there. We'll either uh, go into the British Virgin Islands or possibly to St. Bart's. But if you want to talk about another very unaffordable island, that is one. Yes, yeah. I (laughs) was in St. Martin recently on a cruise excursion, just like a single day. Yeah, and I took took a Jeep tour around the island. It's a gore. I mean, oh, my goodness. I got to. I'll show you this picture. You got to go to this beach if you go. Oh my gosh, I'd love it because we we definitely might have an overnight there. But you know, that region was hit quite yes, um, hard. quite hard by Hurricane Ir- Irma. And so I'm sort of interested in going back and looking at, I mean, they've, they've done a lot of work towards the recovery. A lot of hotels are opening and that sort of thing. So I'm yeah. hoping to be able to report on all the places that are open. <laughs> yeah, I was there just after that, um, shortly after it. So wow. I believe it was when was I there? March or April? Because we were on the celebrity cruise. Um, it must have been April, just before Mother's Day for a mommy and me at sea. Right. And it it was devastating. And you know, St. Martin is divided in the two. So one's Dutch and one's French. And we right. were on a Jeep tour and just hearing our guide, it was interesting to hear them talk because, you know, the Dutch side, they put all their money into the lower income and kind of getting the people who needed the help first, that's where they put their money and the parts that were hit the worst. And then France, on the other hand, (laughs) cleaned up all the rich people's areas, according to our driver, of course. uh, Wow. And that was once you cross the border, because there is a border, it's a unmanned, just you get a sign. Once you cross the border, we went through this really nice, rich neighborhood, but then you start coming down and it was just, it was sad. It was, it was really sad to see the devastation that still was there. Well, you know, and and you're absolutely right that, um, you know, because there's so many different islands in the Caribbean and and I'm sure the level of recovery can vary quite a lot between, you know, which between the countries and and the type of support they've been given. And so, so that's, you know, we, we had a trip to the British Virgin Islands about five years ago and I just fell in love. And I think of all these businesses and all these families that have suffered with the destruction. And I just, I just like to, I guess, see if we can do our part in letting people know that they're back open for business. You know, (laughs) I love that. I think that's awesome. Yeah, definitely. That's a great thing. Great. And what about you? What about you where are you off to next uh, I leave tomorrow with Lizzie her and nice. I are going to go check out the brand new celebrity edge cruise ship for we're not that's so exciting yes so we're flying down to Fort Lauderdale we're not making any 
ports of call stops. It's basically just to see the ship. So we have two nights, three days aboard, and then we fly home. And then right after I get home, two days later, I fly over to New York for another two days, and then I fly home. And then two days later, I fly to Nashville for two days, and then I fly home. It's the most insane (laughs) December ever. Wow. I know. Well, um, thank you for taking some time to talk to me (laughs) for your busy schedule. (laughs) I know. It's all these like two day trips all on the East Coast. I still haven't like readjusted from being in Memphis recently. And so I think I'm just going to stay on East Coast time for a while now. Uh, It's amazing what I get done in the mornings when I wake up. We do love our West Coast living though, don't we? (laughs) Yeah. West Coast is nice, especially when I watch football. I'm an NFL fan. And so I always feel bad for all those people that their football games start at 8 p.m. That seems so weird for me. (laughs) I'm rarely up past eight. I know. That's what I mean. <laughs> on my East Coast time now, I'm always in bed at nine and I wake up at five. It works out well. <laughs> <laughs> perfect. Perfect. Well, thanks again, Tara. Have a great day. Uh, you too. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining us again this week. And I just wanted to remind everyone that we are collecting your audio recordings of where you are headed in 2019. You know, if you have an iPhone, it works beautifully to just use the voice recorder app on your iPhone, and then you can save that recording and just shoot an email to podcast at vacationmavens.com. And we will put those together and be able to feature you guys in an episode. So join us again next week. Hopefully Tamara will be feeling better. And we are going to chat all about my recent trip to Memphis as well as talking all about Puerto Rico. So join us then and thanks as always for listening. <music>